Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome back to our series on endodontics. Like all my videos, I'm going to be focusing only on the highest yield topics. And now that we've talked about non-surgical endodontic treatment, namely root canal therapy, naturally, we can talk next about surgical endodontic treatment. All right, so from an endodontic treatment planning perspective, we have basically three options. Our first option is conventional root canal treatment that we talked about in the last video. And this is orthograde. When I mean orthograde, I mean it's done in the normal direction, accessing the root canal from the coronal aspect of the tooth. Next, we have endodontic retreatment. And this involves reaccessing the canal, removing all the root canal materials in the canal, re-instrumenting it, and finally refilling it. And our third treatment option is surgical root canal treatment. And that's when there is a persistent infection around the apex of the tooth. And then it involves enlarging an osseous window with a burr, removing that infected tissue, cutting off the root tip, instrumenting in a root end retrograde direction, and filling in the tip of the canal. All things you can look forward to us talking about in this video. So root canal treatment is the first treatment option for irreversible pulpitis, pulpal necrosis, and or some apical diseases, all of those diagnosis classifications we talked about in the second video of this series. So if that's our first treatment option, these two are our backups and they're things that we do if the root canal treatment is a failure. So you would retreat if the root canal treatment fails and the problem is in the canal. Surgical root canal treatment, otherwise known as microsurgery, is done if the root canal treatment fails and the problem is at or just outside the apex. So root canal treatment is our go-to and the second two are options if the first one fails. And the decision about which one to do is based on where the problem originates. All right, so let's talk about incision and drainage, which is an important procedure in the surgical world. So this procedure involves a surgical opening in soft tissue to release exudate and pressure. And it's best for localized and fluctuant swellings. One like in this image here, there's a, a fluctuant mass filled presumably with pus and granulation tissue, and it's involving the soft tissue. And so the operator is taking a blade, looks to be a number 11 blade, and is performing an incision and allowing that exudate and buildup to drain out. And so in this image, the operator is using a hemostat to grab and tug out that granulation tissue to achieve a drain from the source of infection. And you can actually place a drain of some, surg of some surgical sterilized material to allow for that pressure buildup to leak out over time. So incision and drainage is done in soft tissue. Now there's a very similar procedure and it's called trephination. And that's where a surgical opening is made into hard tissue, into bone, to, again, to release exudate and pressure. So for the board exams, remember incision and drainage is pertinent to soft tissue, whereas trephination is a word regarding hard tissue. Same process, just involving drilling into bone. All right, so finally we have periapical microsurgery, which is a technical term for the complete surgical endodontic treatment process. So in conventional root canal treatment, our goal was to access the pulp space from the coronal aspect of the tooth, creating an access preparation and then instrumenting and finally sealing the canal through that access opening. And in a surgical root canal treatment, the approach is the exact opposite. Now we're achieving access through the bone by the apex of the tooth and accessing and instrumenting and finally sealing this through that apical access. Note that for this procedure, 
the coronal aspect is already sealed. So it's already had an orthograde root canal treatment done with gutta percha and sealer and a restoration on top. And now we're aiming to attain a better seal apically. So after the patient is sufficiently anesthetized, we start by opening a soft tissue flap and drilling through the bone. If you're choosing to perform this treatment, there probably is some apical infection here. So this is a great opportunity to clean that out as we talked about, basically like the trephin trephination stage. Then you resect three millimeters of diseased root tip, which you can see embedded in this infected tissue. That process of root end resection is known as apicoectomy. So apicoectomy is often used to describe this whole process, but apicoectomy is technically only the part where you resect the apex, and the entire process again is known as periapical microsurgery. So removing three millimeters of root tip is the most important thing to remember. And the second most important thing to remember is concerning the angle or the bevel at which you cut off that root tip. So I'm gonna jump ahead to the next step for a second. The conventional way to instrument the canal and instrument the canal once the root tip is sectioned would be with a round burr. And that would require a 45 degree angle bevel. But the problem is the steeper the angle, the greater the chance of leakage, which is exactly what we're trying to avoid. So modern microsurgical technique involves using an ultrasonic tip to instrument the canal. And we can now use a much shallower bevel. So zero to 10 degrees is ideal and about what you're seeing in this image here. So after cutting off the root tip at a shallow bevel, you instrument the canal in a retrograde fashion with an ultrasonic instrument, and you prepare three millimeters of root end. So it's nice and easy to remember. You have three millimeters of root tip that you're cutting off, and then what you're left with, you instrument three millimeters into that root end. And finally, you retrofill with an excellent biocompatible material known as mineral trioxide aggregate, or MTA for short. So that's what you see here as the root end filling. And then you suture the soft tissue and allow the bone to heal. And now you have a root canal system that's ideally sealed from both an orthograde, or coronal direction, and retrograde, or apical direction. So pretty cool, right? So the ultimate hope is to kill as many bacteria as possible and starve the ones that are left over by sealing the canal system completely. All right, everyone, so that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and interesting. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more on endodontics and all things dentistry. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you all in the next video.